Welcome to Tai Chi Benefits and Basics. Thank you for coming today. I'm Diane Bailey. I am the creator of the Open the Door to Tai Chi system, which is an educational partner with the Functional Aging Institute. I have been practicing and teaching Tai Chi for over a decade now. It's an amazing form of exercise that has a lot of uh, mystery surrounding it, has a lot of confusion, and yet doctors are recommending it for people, physical therapists are recommending it for people. This is something that I want you to understand, which is why I'm doing this webinar, is understand the basics and the benefits of Tai Chi, and know that it doesn't have to be intimidating. I'll have questions. You'll be able to answer, ask questions at the end. So let's go through the webinar and we'll do all the question and answer at the end. So today, with the, I want you to understand um, Tai Chi, the basics and the benefits, and know that tomorrow is World Tai Chi and Qigong Day, April 29th. One World, One Breath is the theme for World Tai Chi and Qigong Day. And like I said, there's a lot of confusion surrounding both of these forms of exercise. They are both come from China, and people are intimidated by that, and they don't need to be. So the first question that I want you to uh, understand is, what is the difference between Tai Chi and Qigong? Qigong is a bigger umbrella of healing arts. It, it's done to heal the bodies of certain ailments, to keep it healthy. It's done in separate movements. In fact, you're encouraged to be separate with those movements, do them in different orders. Tai Chi is a subset. It is a healing art, but it's a subset of Qigong, really, that because it is a martial art, it started as a fighting style, it is a flow of movements. They're not separate movements. So Tai Chi, yes, is healing, and we're going to go through those benefits that you can see how healing it is. But Qigong is the bigger, um, the bigger healing arts umbrella, and Tai Chi is a martial art. There are different styles of Tai Chi. This is really a chronological order of when they began. Uh, the Chen style started first, and then the Yang style came from that, the Wu style and the Sun style. In the Open the Door to Tai Chi system, we teach the Yang style. And we teach the Yang style 24 short form that there, there is a long form. The original form is the long form. And there's 108 moves in the Yang long form. As the Chinese people would pass down these forms to their children, they would change something in the form to make it their specific family's form. So there are many different versions of the long form. When the communist government took over, they said, wow, we really like Tai Chi, but there's so many different versions. They, so that what they did is they took 24 pieces of the long form and standardized it into the short form. And this is what I teach in the Open the Door to Tai Chi system, because this is the most popular form. If you see people doing it in the park, doing Tai Chi in the park, that's more than likely what they're doing is the Yang style short form. So if you think about, I came up with a definition of Tai Chi that's this, Tai Chi is a martial art that utilizes gentle flowing movements to enhance health in the body and the mind. So I want to break that apart and first we'll talk about Tai Chi is a martial art. We need to understand that. I don't want you to be intimidated by that. This is part of what the webinar is about, is to take away that intimidation factor. But we have to understand at the very basis Tai Chi is a martial art, and when you think of martial arts, you know, you probably are thinking of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, uh, Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, you know, that kind of martial arts, and those are martial arts. That's an external form of martial art. So those external forms of martial arts are, are really focused on power and strength and hitting and kicking and 
being very tense and then relaxing in separate kind of movements. Um, that's what we're used to seeing. While Tai Chi is a martial art, it's not an external martial art. It's an internal martial art. It focuses on unifying the body and the mind. It's a, it's a circular pattern. It, everything is connected. You're very relaxed as you're doing it, and yet it is a martial art. You're still ready to strike. The, the power, the energy is not in, in a start and stop kind of motion like the external martial arts are. In the Tai Chi classics, there's a quote that I want to uh, share with you. It says, and this is talking about external, when old strength is depleted, new strength is not yet begun. And that's your window of opportunity to strike. And again, that's talking about the external. With the internal, that flow is never a start and stop kind of thing. It's always moving. So the difference between those internal and external styles, Tai Chi being the internal, and it is focused on unifying the body and the mind. So we think of it as a mind-body exercise. And often it's glumped together with yoga. People will come in and they'll ask me, what is the difference between Tai Chi and yoga? Is, aren't they the same thing? And no, they're not. They're very, very different. They're both good forms of exercise. Uh, but Tai Chi is done standing. Unlike yoga, where you have to get down on the floor. Um, unlike yoga, you, we never do inversions. So with some people, it's very, either they don't want to or they maybe they can't get up and down off the floor or they just don't want to do it in front of other people. Tai Chi is often a great uh, form of this mind-body exercise that maybe yoga they're not, they're not able to do or they just don't want to do. Everything can be modified in Tai Chi. This is not something that you have to do perfectly. People with hip issues, people with knee issues, people with shoulder issues, wrist issues, this, you can do this in Tai Chi because it is accessible. And I wish that I could show you some of the movements, but this format of a webinar I can't do. I will tell you at the end of the webinar that I'll... Um, let you know how to get a video where I will teach you some of the movements and you'll be able to do these movements and experience Tai Chi. So let's go back to that definition. Tai Chi is a martial art that utilizes gentle flowing movements to enhance health in the body and the mind. Tai Chi is a martial art. We just went through that. Now let's get into what the benefits are all about. Utilizing gentle flowing movements, yes, to enhance the health in the body and the mind. So in the Open the Door to Tai Chi system, I told you before, we teach the Yang Style 24 short form. And sometimes people will come in to me and they'll say, well, 24 moves, you know, once I learn those 24 moves, I learn the form, I'm done, right? And that can't be any further from the truth because that horizontal learning of learning the separate movements, one, two, three, through 24, that's horizontal learning. But Tai Chi is not a horizontal learning event. It is a vertical learning event. It is a lifelong learning event because once you learn those 24 moves, and that's hard enough, believe me, to learn the moves and then to memorize the form, put it in the right sequence, you've just begun learning. Then you start to layer on the underlying principles and the basic concepts of Tai Chi. And these underlying principles are what really drive the benefits of Tai Chi. Just learning the movements is not enough. You need to understand these underlying principles to get the benefits. And, and this is why learning from a video, those, those videos, it's really incomplete. Because if you're just learning the moves, you're not getting the benefits. These basic concepts 
of Tai Chi that I'm talking about, the underlying principles that I'm talking about, are columns. This is, there are columns in your body, one going straight down the center of your body, one through each shoulder, through each hip. I want, to imagine, I want you to imagine yourself as if you're being suspended from the crown of your head, just from, from the ceiling to the crown of your head, and your body just falls naturally into alignment. And this is where those columns come into play. We move keeping those columns intact in Tai Chi. Where rotation is important. We rotate in Tai Chi in that the ancient manuscripts talk about rotation as massaging the internal organs. We rotate around that central column. I find it fascinating how many people come into my studio that they've really lost that basic ability to rotate because they sit so much. So Tai Chi brings that back. Substantial and insubstantial, understanding this concept really drives the benefit of balance, this one and moving from the Dantian. Substantial and insubstantial is, is throughout the form. It's Think of a wave coming in and rolling back out. One leg is always substantial and the other is insubstantial and you're shifting your weight throughout the form. Moving from your Dantian, I know that's a funny word, but that's part of what this webinar is all about, is taking away that intimidation factor of explaining some of the basic concepts. This, your Dantian is two inches in from your belly button and two inches down. It's the center of your energy in Tai Chi, and it's, from an exercise physiology standpoint, it's the center of your balance. You're moving from the Dantian using that weight shift of substantial and insubstantial. And this is where people can really improve their balance, understanding these concepts. Yes, the Dantian is the center of your energy, but there is a ball of energy that you're manipulating throughout the form that's external. The Tai Chi is based on circular movements and being connected, uh, being rooted and grounded. This is something to understand where you're, you're stable and yet you're not glued to the ground. You're able to move and move with balance. The breathing, relaxation, and connectedness, this, this is part of understanding how not to breathe, that in a typical uh, person, they're, they've gotten into the habit of really shallow breathing. In Tai Chi, we teach the deep, long, slow, continuous breathing, and that really drives that relaxation, um, part of the benefits of helping people deal with stress and anxiety. And of course, that martial arts application, this is, you have to understand that, as I've said, it is a martial art. If you understand why you're doing what you're doing, what does this move actually do, that's an important part of understanding Tai Chi as well. So let's see what Mayo Clinic has a list on their website. If you go to Mayo Clinic on, on the internet, they'll list these benefits of Tai Chi. And this is just a partial list that I have. If you go to the website, you'll see even more than this. Tai Chi reduces anxiety and depression, improves balance and flexibility, reduces falls in older adults, improves sleep quality, lowers blood pressure, increases energy, agility, and overall feelings of well-being. So like I said, this is just a partial list. This isn't even all of them, but it's impressive, isn't it? So I want to just take a minute, tell you about my personal story, why I started Tai Chi. In 1994, I started in the martial arts, so 23 years ago. I started as a in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, ground fighting as a grappler. And then I moved on to Taekwondo. I am a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. So I'm a, I'm a very high intensity person. I love punching and kicking and fighting. And that is great. But in 2005, I decided that I probably should start to learn Tai Chi because I knew that my body would not be able to 
keep up this high intensity being hit and hitting things and kicking things for the rest of my life. So I said, I need to learn Tai Chi. And when I first started it, I really did not like it. It was so slow and it was so gentle. And I thought, Ugh, I, I just, I don't know, why, why do I want to do this? But I persevered. And now that I'm 56 years old and have been doing Tai Chi for over a decade, I understand that it is that perfect balance for me. And I'm not just talking about the physical balance like standing on one leg. I'm talking about the balance of it's that soft side of exercise that I need because I have I can't keep my body doing that hard fighting all the time. It has allowed me to continue with that punching and kicking because I still student do still enjoy it, but it has allowed me to, to continue. So I want you to think about Tai Chi. I tell you that story because when you're thinking about Tai Chi, it's not just for that little old lady that needs help crossing the street. It's for everyone. It's even for people like me that still like to punch and kick, but you need that complementary form of exercise, that gentle form of exercise. So let's look specifically at those benefits again. Tai Chi reduces stress and anxiety, improves sleep quality, increases energy and vitality. We're going to look at studies that prove these benefits. I want, I want to do this because it's not just me, it's not just the martial arts community touting Tai Chi is look, look what it can do. This is an amazing uh, form of exercise that has been studied over and over and over again and the science community and the medical community are proving these things for people and that's why they're recommending it. So let's look at this first study. The effect of Tai Chi exercise on blood pressure, it is, serves as a practical non-pharmacologic adjunct to conventional hypertension management, which is a fancy way of saying Tai Chi can be a non-pill way to reduce blood pressure. And that's important because we all know that we don't want to have pills in our body all the time. We want to be able to deal with stress in a way that helps our body. Psychological well-being. This study showed that it reduced stress, anxiety, depression, mood disturbance, and increased self-esteem. That increased energy and vitality. If you look here, the subjects reported less tension, less depression, anger, fatigue, confusion, and state anxiety, and they felt more vigorous and in general they had less total mood disturbance. Um, that, that's an amazing that like I said there's so much stress in our lives and Tai Chi can actually help us deal with that and increase our energy and our vitality. This study, the improvement of health and well-being in older adults, this talks about how it helps people with their perceived quality of life. And this was a meta-analysis. It said findings from numerous studies support the belief that the practice of Tai Chi has multiple benefits to practitioners that are not only physical in nature. It's recommended as a strategy to promote successful aging. I love that. I love that phrase, successful aging. I really don't like the phrase anti-aging. Because if you think about anti-aging, if you're not aging, that means you're under the ground. All of us, each one of us, ages every single day. What we want is not anti-aging. We want successful aging. And Tai Chi is recommended as a strategy to promote successful aging. As that study said, the benefits are not only physical. And if we look at this list, improving balance, increasing mental focus and memory capability, managing and reducing chronic pain. And if you think about improving balance, you have to say, yes, Diane, that's physical. That, and yes, it is. Obviously, balance is physical. Balance is one of those things that if you don't work on it, you lose it. 
especially as you age. And But the cost of losing your balance, this is falls. And falls are a, a leading cause of death in our older population. The, the cost of falling is not only that hospital stay or that, that pain, it's also a loss of independence. So this is where it's not only a physical benefit to improve your balance, but when you have a fall, you often are scared now to do anything and you become more dependent on society. So if we're helping people with their balance, we're helping them remain independent. So let's look at that balance. At hundreds and hundreds of studies with Tai Chi and balance. If you just look on simple internet, you'll, you'll find many, many, many studies. Tai Chi improves static and dynamic balance. So movement balance, this is what we want, is that functional balance. Tai Chi is effective in balance function enhancement and falls prevention. I can't tell you, improving balance is the number one thing is people come into my studio, they want to take Tai Chi. This is the number one reason they say, I, I've noticed I'm not as balanced, I, I'm, I'm wobbly, I want to improve my balance. And it's also the number one thing that after they've done Tai Chi for a few weeks, they come up to me and they say, Diana, I, I can't believe how much improvement in my balance I can already feel. It's not just for the general population either. There's studies with people that have conditions like Parkinson's or like multiple sclerosis where balance is an issue because of other things going on in their bodies. And Tai Chi training, as it's, this study shows, reduced balance impairments in patients with mild to moderate Parkinson's with additional benefits of improved functional capacity and redu reduced falls. So let's move on to that. Remember our definition, health in the body and the mind? Increasing mental focus and memory capability was one of those benefits. This study on cognition performance in older adults, this is fascinating. And I want to read it. Um, I know you can read, but I want to go through what this says. As a physical exercise, Tai Chi provides both moderate aerobic and agility slash mobility training, which are each believed to impact cognitive function via unique neurophysiological pathways. Tai Chi also involves the learning of choreographed movement patterns, which may support visuospatial processing, processing speed, and episodic memory. As a mind-body exercise, Tai Chi includes training in sustained attentional focus and multitasking. I just finished up doing the Female Brain Summit where I was one of 24 experts on brain health and I, my focus was showing how Tai Chi helps your brain. You, number one, you have to learn movements that you've never done before. You have to learn how to do them. You have to remember what does part the wild horse's mane mean. Then you need to put it into a form and you have to memorize the form, put them in the proper order. All of this is causing your brain, this challenging your mind. You, a lot of movements cross the midline and that coordinates the hemispheres of the brain. So there are lots of things in Tai Chi that are forcing your brain to work and to function and we all know that that helps that aging brain to keep young. This study was interesting where it said mindfulness, blah, mindfulness meditation training changes brain structure. It actually changes brain structure. And Tai Chi has been called movement meditation. You're not, it doesn't have to be meditation in the traditional sense, but there is a definite meditative effect with Tai Chi. This one, with actual MRI exams, showed an increase in gray matter density in the hippocampus, known to be important for learning and memory. It also showed a decrease in gray matter density in the amygdala, which is known to play an important role in anxiety and stress. So this movement meditation, it increases the part of the brain that's important for learning and for memory and helps reduce anxiety and stress. 
This is part of the whole package with Tai Chi. It's also a way to manage chronic pain. This, uh, thinking of people with fibromyalgia or with um, osteoarthritis, they're dealing with pain all the time and it's chronic. The latest Scientific American Mind magazine came up with, uh, they have an article in there that talked about the opioid crisis of how with people with chronic pain, doctors are prescribing these op opioids and people are being addicted to them. And they're, the medical community now is trying to find an alternative way to treat chronic pain. And Tai Chi is one of those alternatives that they're finding is extremely successful in helping people deal with pain. This particular study dealt with fibromyalgia and it talked about because of its mind-body attributes, Tai Chi could be especially well suited to the treatment of fibromyalgia. The same study, it said mind-body interventions may improve psychosocial well-being, increase confidence, and help patients overcome the fear of pain. Furthermore, the controlled breathing, remember we talked about that breathing, breathing and movements promote a restful state and mental tranquility, which may raise pain thresholds and help people break the pain cycle. So that's part of how Tai Chi is helping with chronic pain, is it's not, it's, it's helping people with that restful state, that movement meditation, helping them overcome the fear of pain. And, and raising that pain threshold so that they're not as aware of the pain. So you can see the benefits of Tai Chi are numerous and they're proven. But what I want to really emphasize is it's fun to learn. People are not coming into class saying, I need to raise my pain threshold. Um, I need to lower my blood pressure. This is what I'm doing in class. No, they're not thinking about that. They're, they're learning moves. They're learning how to step a different way, how to move their arms. Where are their arms? What movement's coming next? They're having fun with people who are learning with them. It's, it's, it's something that they're not coming in just being all focused on getting better. I'm telling you, they're having fun because it's so different as well. It offers a, an alternative. And it's interesting, some people who might never be interested in exercise at all because they're intimidated by it, once they learn how gentle Tai Chi is and how easy it is to move, this brings them into that world of exercise. And remember, we showed this has been proven as a moderate form of exercise. This is amazing for people that you have, I had one client just the other day leave class, his name's Bill, he said, Diane, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. He goes, I don't know why, but I am. <laughs> and I laughed. And it, Tai Chi doesn't have to be intimidating. It doesn't have to be something that's all shrouded in mystery and that only martial artists can do. Everyday people can do this and get the benefits of Tai Chi. You don't have to be a martial artist. These benefits can manifest as an exercise if you include the underlying principles. You have to include those underlying principles. If you're just doing the moves, that's, that's not going to drive those benefits that we were just talking about. Part of, the biggest part of my mission with Open the Door to Tai Chi, though, is I want you to understand it's fun. It's not intimidating. You don't have to move to China, you don't have to become a monk, you don't have to immerse yourself in the martial arts. You can do it, get the benefits of it, and have fun doing it. It is accessible to everyone. As a movement meditation, it's gentle on the joints. The, it, it should be accessible to all ages, all abilities. It is done standing. There are absolutely forms of Tai Chi that you can do in a seated position for those that are so infirm or perhaps um, confined to a wheelchair. But for the most part, we want people standing because that's real life. That's functional exercise. Is we don't, 
or we shouldn't spend our life just sitting. We should be able to move. This, the benefits of that mindfulness meditation, that you're, you're, it's movement meditation, you're, you're getting a meditative effect, but you're not having to just sit and meditate. You're actually moving and you're helping your body in a way that actually translates to enjoying your life outside of class. I had one student, Steve, who came to me and said, Diane, you've helped my golf game more than anybody else ever has. And that's because he understood the weight shift better and, and became more balanced. Another client, Melanie, she said she was hiking with her husband. And remember, I live in Colorado, so we have the Rocky Mountains here. And she was hiking and, and was really kind of scared. She was going over, over some boulders. And then she remember, remembered her Tai Chi and started to use the Tai Chi and the weight shift. And she goes, all of a sudden, I felt very balanced and totally enjoyed my hiking with my husband that day just because of her Tai Chi training. I have another client who, Robin, who just returned from a cruise. And this is not a cruise that... You know, those big ships, big ocean liners. This was a little one that was going around the bottom of South America. And she said the waves were very intense. They were very high. There was a lot of seasickness going on. And people were gripping the railings as they're moving about the boat. And she goes, I didn't have to because I felt balanced. Even though the, it, the, there was, it was really moving she said, I felt very balanced and I felt very blessed that I have been doing Tai Chi for the last year, that I can enjoy that trip a whole lot more than the other people. So you can see it does translate to people's lives. The Open the Door to Tai Chi system is, it created, I created it so that you un, get a deep understanding of Tai Chi. And it gives you the ability to teach it if you choose to that you can convey those benefits of Tai Chi. You're not just learning the moves, but you're learning those underlying principles. And it gives you that, that deep understanding of Tai Chi. Like I said earlier, I want you to be able to do some Tai Chi. I want to show you some Tai Chi. And so if you haven't already, go to TaiChiSystem.com. And when that pop-up box comes up, put your name and your email address in there, and I'll send you a free mini course in Tai Chi where you'll actually be able to do some Tai Chi with me and understand in that way that it's easy to learn. Just in that little mini course, you'll find that it, it'll be very easy to learn, and it takes away the intimidation factor. I don't want you to be scared of Tai Chi. I want you to understand it and get the benefits that it provides. It's an amazing form of exercise. Normally in the Open the Door to Tai Chi system, which does provide a certification, there are 16 modules. It, the basic certification is 399. The certification with distinction, which actually gives you access to me, where we Skype and I can help correct your form and help you learn a little bit more, is that 549. But because it is World Tai Chi and Qigong Day tomorrow, we're doing a special sale, $100 off for these three days, today, tomorrow, and Sunday, if you put in the promo code Tai Chi 100. You'll get $100 off the basic certification and that certification with distinction. So again, it's TaiChiSystem.com. And I, I really encourage you that this is something that, like I said, gives you a deep understanding of Tai Chi, not just the moves, but understanding the benefits, understanding those underlying principles that drive the benefits. I'm very thankful for the Functional Aging Institute that they've recognized Tai Chi as a, a way to help successful aging, that they've partnered with me as an educational um, component of the Functional Aging Institute. Again, my website is TaiChiSystem.com. If you have questions and you want to email me, it is Diane, and that's two N's, D-I-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at TaiChiSystem.com. Please feel free to email me with any questions that you might have. Um, 
let if you have questions about Tai Chi or questions about the certification. I want to thank the Functional Aging Institute for being a part of this and bringing Tai Chi into the open. So let's look at some of your questions. Um, yes, the difference between Tai Chi and Qigong, we went over at the very beginning that Qigong is that big umbrella of uh, healing arts and Tai Chi being a martial art. Um, Qigong is that um, big umbrella of healing arts and Tai Chi is the martial art that is very healing, obviously, as we've gone through all of these benefits, but not, um, it's a, it is a martial art and you have to do it in a flow of movements. Let's see, so, uh, someone else asked if they, had a, they have a child with autism and wanted to know if Tai Chi would be good for them. Um, for coordination and for learning and absolutely I, I don't know the studies with autism and Tai Chi however I feel because of that mental focus because of that mind-body connection I really do feel like it would help someone with autism and then someone's asking about the certification is it all online how long does it take yes it is online there's 16 modules in the open the door to Tai Chi system because it teaches you the separate movements, it teaches you the flow of the form, and then it teaches you the underlying principles and how to get those benefits from the principles. It's not an easy course. It will take you a while, and just depending on how much time you have to invest in it, it, it could be a good uh, four or five month learning process for you. But it is all online. With that, um, with Distinction program, you do have the option to have two Skype sessions with me and then a Skype test at the end. So any other questions? I appreciate you being here today. I appreciate you taking the time to learn about Tai Chi. I hope that you understand that it is easy. It doesn't have to be a mystery. That's part of what Open the Door to Tai Chi is, is I want to open the door and let you see it as a wonderful form of exercise that really can help you and can help a lot of the people in your community. If you have any questions, email me at diane at taichisystem.com. Thank you again to the Functional Aging Institute, to Dan and Cody. I appreciate your support in this and, and the fact that we want to bring Tai Chi to the everyday person. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy World Tai Chi and Qigong Day. Bye-bye.